Um, so this is called Export Tariff Guidance. And I'm going to start by um, just explaining very, very simply what tariffs are. So, first of all, what are they? They are a tax on imports. We've all been hearing a lot about tariffs, um, especially with Brexit coming and all the changes that can happen. But there's nothing too magical about them. It's just basically a tax. And in the UK, HMRC collects that tax and enforces it. And that's all it is. It's a tax on imports. So why are they there? Um, number one, to generate income for the state. So sometimes um, they're not like parking tickets or speeding fines where people say, oh, it's just to generate income for the state. These are actually there very often just to generate income. Another reason why they're there is um, it's protectionism. So it's to protect local businesses from basically what can be cheap imports. And if you remember your history lessons, um, you might remember the Corn Law, which was a law that was passed to stop cheap imports of corn, of, of wheat and maize and grains coming into this country in the 1700s and 1800s. And that was to protect the interests of the landowners. The UK loved their landowners. And that was to the detriment of the mercantile class, because the merchants were always there, ready to, to go out and bring product into this country. Um, those were repealed in 1846. And um, that meant that you know, there, was, there was zero tariffs. And that is an example of um, free trade. So they can also, they're also there because in future trade negotiations, they can be used as bargaining chips. So if you don't have any tariff, if you're importing you know, some goods and there's no tariff and then you want to do a deal with that particular country, you can't go and say, oh, we'll start importing your stuff by reducing the tariff because you've already reduced the tariff. So some countries will retain tariffs just as a tactical measure so that when a free trade agreement comes around and there's some bargaining to be done about you lower that tariff and I'll lower my tariff, then you will have, actually have a tariff to, to lower. And trade deals are important, as you know, and they can lead to, to lower tariffs. Um, and who pays the tariffs? Now, it tends to be the importer who pays the tariffs. So, Really, if you're exporting, tariffs aren't so much your business because you don't have to pay them. But sometimes you've got to think about, you know, the guy who's buying your goods, he's going to have to pay a tariff. Um, so, so that comes into the, into the cost. It comes into decisions about whether your product is competitive in this country or in that country that you want to export to. Um, how are they calculated? So every item in the world that is manufactured or even not manufactured, every item that is traded is listed in the common customs nomenclature. And next to it, there is um, the tariff code that applies to it. And when I say every item, you wouldn't believe it's possible, but it's true. You know, tractor parts, silk pyjamas, all different kinds of seafood, of course, all the species of plants that can be traded. They're all there, they all have an individual tariff. Someone has gone and said, right, 5% for this. Um, so those are all there. Um, they're usually calculated on, as a percentage of the value of the goods. <coughs> Some countries, and I'll give you an example, the US is one of them, um, they, they calculate it on the, value, on, on the basis of weight. So they'll say two cents per, per ton or something like that. Um, <clears throat> and how big are these tariffs? Uh, they could be, with seafood, it could be anything between 0 and 40%. And I'd say 40%. Some tariffs in some countries will be bigger. There are, I've seen 100% tariffs. But as a general guide, it'll be between 0 and 40. You can't give a specific tariff percentage because every single preparation has its own tariff. Um, and I'll talk about that a bit later, about what, what the differences are. 
But here are just some examples. And these, by the way, are the full tariffs. So forget any trade deals or anything. This is what, you, what the importer in, in the country you're exporting to will be liable to pay if they had to pay the full tariff. So Australia and United States, they are actually very, very good at having very low tariffs. And most seafood is 0% tariffs. Tariffed, even though when we import from the States and even Australia, we do slap a tariff on it. They aren't like that. They will take it um, and not have to pay a tariff on it. Um, Saudi Arabia tends to be 5%. In fact, there are a load of Gulf states that work together, Kuwait, Oman, and they tend to put all seafood at 5%. Um, Argentina... South America, they tend a little bit more towards protectionism, so it's about 5%. But I just put this example there, 0% for salted cod. There are some products that some countries feel they really need to import because they can't produce it themselves. Salted cod is one of them. So they say, okay, this is one of the things we really need to import and there's no point putting a tariff on it because you know, the citizens of our country should be able to access this. Um, the converse is things like caviar, luxury goods. Many countries will slap a massive tariff on that because they say this is a, a good chance of you know, us making money. Um, some more examples. China, about 12%. India and Turkey, 30%. If Turkey had to apply the full tariff. This is a map of the world showing you what the tariff landscape looks like for, for seafood, for fish and fish products. <coughs> so just as I said before, you can see the pink regions are zero tariffed or zero to five percent tariffed. United States, Australia, the Gulf states, and that thing in the middle is, is Ukraine. The ones that tend to put a lot of tariffs on South America, they're in, really into protectionism. If you look at Ecuador over there, that is the darkest speck of South America. Luckily, we have a free trade agreement at the moment with Ecuador. But you can see if that free trade agreement is lost, um, tariffs will be quite high. Um, countries like India, as I said, are really good at slapping on tariffs. <clears throat> You can also notice that some, some areas are the same color. If you look at the, the, the southern bit of Africa, for example, there's a group of countries there that all seem to be the same orange. That's South Africa, Botswana, Namibia. They have a customs union over there. When you have a customs union, the countries tend to get together and agree, let's have exactly the same tariffs. If goods come into one country, they can freely move to the other country without having to, to go through customs basically. Um, Russia, Kazakhstan, and Belarus, they, they're all orange as well, all the same color. That's because they have uh, a customs union as well. And of course, Europe, as you can see, is a, is a customs union, as we all now know. Um, here are some examples of um, what we call, within Seafish, some key exports that we took as, as examples. <laughs> These are some of the main exports that the UK sends out to, to Europe. I mean, until now, we never even used to call them exports. We used to call them dispatches. But if we do get out of Europe, Europe becomes a different country. We will have to pay full tariffs if there's absolutely no deal. So this is what it looks like if we had to pay absolutely full tariffs. And you can see they're quite significant between 7.5 and if it's, if it's tuna, it's 24%. There's a range, for example, for the cod because um, there's a difference between whether it's fresh cod or filleted cod or salted cod. So the presentation is important. <clears throat> the, uh, there's been a technical notification from the UK government about tariffs. It wasn't called tariffs. It was called something like classifying your goods using the tariff nomenclature. And that came out 23rd of August. And it does say over there that, you know, if there is no deal, this is the sort of thing we're going to have to pay full rate. Um, so 
back to basics again. Who sets the tariffs? So the UK has the right to set its own tariffs once it's out of the EU. Every country has the right to set its own tariffs. Um, but that is for us importing. So when we export the importing country, if we export to the United States, the United States can set its own tariffs, as we are finding out. Um, the tariffs are set within the rules of the World Trade Organization. And we've been hearing a lot, again, about the World Trade Organization, an organization we didn't really think about very much. But what is it? The World Trade Organization is just um, the countries that come together and make agreements about trade. And um, they have some common principles. They, they want to have you know, as frictionless trade as possible. And they also want to have transparency about all the taxes that, that are involved when you trade. So this is the, the WTO rule book. Um, it contains agreements. They, they don't make the rules. Countries get together and make the rules. And the, the, appro the approaches that should apply when setting tariffs. And one of the important things about this is the transparency. So every country should have its own tariff schedule and a commitment not to increase tariffs for any particular countries. So you've got your tariff there, and that is what you, you can go by. <clears throat> now it's worth thinking a little bit about, if you're importing something, what, if you're exporting something, what it looks like from the view of the from the viewpoint of the importer. What are the charges that the importer has to think about? So obviously, he'll have to think about the cost of the item, insurance, all sorts of administrative costs, inspection charges, which we know can be quite a lot for, for seafood sometimes, handling fees, and the tariffs. The tariff that the importer abroad has to pay is, is one of the things. And all this goes into the mix when the, when the importer decides whether it's worthwhile um, bringing your stuff into his country. And the importer will be thinking about minimizing all of these things and also thinking about whether he can get away without paying any tariffs, probably. So are there any ways of reducing the tariffs? And as you know, there are the free trade arrangements. So I'll go through a few of the things that, that can uh, impact on the tariff. So first of all, there's a full tariff. If, if, if there's no way out, that's what you have to pay. It's called MFN, the most favored nation. And it's called most favored nation. It's a bit of a strange name, but it is basically the standard tax. And that means that, you know, if, you, if you're the most favored nation, you've got the best deal with us, then every other country will have that same deal, excluding free trade arrangements. Then there is the situation of the customs union. As I mentioned before, as we have in Europe at the moment, there is a customs union which stretches as far as Turkey. So Turkey tends to take 30% tariff on seafood if, if they're not part of a customs union. <clears throat> but luckily they are at the moment. There are other customs unions like the Russian one that I mentioned, the Southern African one. The, the Gulf Cooperation Council is another customs union. That's uh, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, United Arab Emirates, and other one, Bahrain, I think. Um, if you export to those countries, it, it, it is advantageous because you export to the UAE, it'll automatically be able to be moved to Saudi Arabia, for example, with no, no extra tariff. So you can have merchants, importers based in the, EU, in the UAE that serve that whole area. Um, you have quota dependent tariffs. Now, a good example, if, if people here are importers, you would know about um, the ATQs, the autonomous tariff quotas, which means that there's a set quota of, I don't know, cod, for example, or coli, that you can import from wherever you like, and it's zero tariffed. Once that quota is used up, then the tariff starts to apply. Now, other countries that we export to can have their own tariff quotas. It's difficult to find out about these things, but they do exist. Um, sometimes the tariffs are country specific, but that has to do with an arrangement. 
So we can have an arrangement with, I don't know, I'm inventing here, we can have an arrangement with China, and China says, yes, we are happy to take so many tons of your cod, tariff-free, but after that, um, it'll be tariffed. Then there are preferential arrangements. Preferential arrangements are not bilateral. It's usually one country that says, okay, for you, it's going to be zero tariff, or for you, it's going to be a reduced tariff. Now, in, in Europe, we do that when we import from developing countries. And that is just a policy where Europe said, right, we need to help these countries, ex we need to help these countries export. And we need to help Bangladesh export textiles. We need to help India export shrimp. So we're going to do this, this uh, general system of preferences. That's what GSP stands for. And there are different flavors of that. And it will either be 0% tariffed or very low tariffed. Um, then there are the trade arrangements, as there are the, the European one, which is with the EFTA and EEA states. At the moment, there is one between Europe and South Korea which is brilliant because it's all 0% tariffed. We get all the Hyundai's from South Korea and we export a ridiculous amount of whelk to them at zero tariffs. But, you know, if we're out, we'll have to renegotiate that free trade agreement. And there are every, um, there's every indication that, that the government wants to do that. Um, there are currently um, uh, free trade agreements with Central America. ACP stands for um, African, Caribbean, and Pacific states, and some other arrangements. <clears throat> this is what the EFTA EEA arrangement looks like. I, I won't really get into this. Um, this is what the current state of state partnerships, uh, trade partnerships, and negotiations looks like. So, just now, as part of Europe, we have all these arrangements, and this, 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 these are two-way arrangements. So. You know, we export at low, low rates. Um, we import and impose zero to low tariffs, and we export, and our exports have low tariffs imposed on them. <clears throat> this is available from, from uh, the DG Trade website, the European Commission. Um, I'll move on from that. So, some guidance. Where can you find the tariff guidance? about, you know, in different countries. It's not that easy to find. Um, every country has its own schedule. And sometimes it's in strange languages, sometimes it's hidden away in, in strange websites. Um, the, the global databases, uh, there's a WDO database, and there is the European database called the Market Access Database. Now, it's always a bit dodgy when you look into these databases because they might not have the very latest information because someone there is going to have to keep their eye on, you know, 150 different tariff schedules and whenever they change, they have to update their own website. So if you go by this, it's only indicative. So really, you need to maybe try and find the national databases. Um, the USA has, has one. You really need to find individual country tariff schedules, I should say. And it's, you can actually find some. You can find the, the Egyptian one, I think, is there. If, if you look for it, just Google it and find it. You just need to make sure that that is the actual tariff schedule and not a tariff schedule that applies to some particular free trade arrangement that that country has. So, you know, knowing the language really helps. Getting someone who knows the language would really help. Um, so, this, this is only um, part of the picture, because as I said, there could be preferential tariffs that these countries will apply to your goods. It's very difficult to find out about those. Um, the best thing you can do is talk to people on the ground, the people who are ready to buy your stuff, have this conversation with them, say, are there any quotas we can use? Are there any preferential arrangements that actually already exist, and if so, what documentation do I have to give you to be, for, for, to, for you to be able to apply um, that preferential arrangement? Now, just an example of what the screenshot looks like if you go to that European database that I, that I mentioned before. So this is just a, an example. Imagine, imagine you wanted to, I don't know if you can read it there, if, if you wanted to send some 
frozen halibut to India. As I said, it's a 30% charge. Um, and there's more to it than that. If you read the small print, you can see under goods and there's a goods and services tax that is levied at a rate of 5% of the duty paid. And there's a social welfare surcharge, which is 10% of the amount of customs duty. So that would add an extra 3% there. So you have to read the small print about these things. The tariff by itself doesn't always tell you the whole story. Um, I'll just give you another example. If the, the United States, most of the stuff is zero tariffed over there, but some things aren't. And one of them is dogfish. And I'm putting this up as an example because it shows you that it, it can charge on a weight basis. And it actually has two different rates of tariff. One is the MFN, which it applies to everyone. And the other is the general, which it applies to countries that are not part of the World Trade Organization. So in a way, it's punishing them. And that's just North Korea and Cuba. Um, where can you find some more export tariff guidance? I'd just like to mention that Seafish does have an export guidance page. Um, it tells you more or less how you can find information about how things are on the ground in the country that you, you're sending your goods to. Um, <clears throat> there's, a, there's guidance on tariffs on seafood imported into the EU. Now, this is useful because, okay, at the moment it looks like, okay, you're not an importer, you want to export to the EU. But once the, once the UK leaves the EU, this tariff will be valid for, you know, for UK people wanting to send to the EU. It'll apply. Um, then there's, a, there's some guidance on rules of origin and free trade agreements and some other stuff. And soon to come there is uh, Arena's tool, which hopefully we'll be able to put some tariff information into. And also Hannah is working on some country-specific guidance. And thank you for today.